just to sort of look at the other things that we do, we put in information out through the farming press and general media. For the 28,000 people on our database, we send them every quarter, every, three times a year, we send them a bulletin with uh, the topical messages, new things from Meblex, new things from BRP, and we also work with the processors. So we would be very happy to produce the processors specific newsletter that they would send out to people that perhaps we don't know. It's all our information, but it has their name on it, so they're happy, but it has all our information, so I'm happy. These are the publications. I've got a sample of them down here. These started off as supposedly a 15-minute read to introduce the topic to people, and whether you were really... There should always be something in there to either remind you of something you've forgotten or something new that you didn't know about. They've actually got a little bit more sophisticated as the later ones have come on, but they're... We've now got 50 of those in the, in, the, uh, in the kind of library of BRP publications. On-farm events are one of our most important ways of engaging producers and getting uptake. So we ran 303 last year. Um, everything from a, an on-farm event where people are sitting on bales and they're there for two hours and it's quite a big open meeting down to that would be what we would call a one-to-many. And then we would do some one-to-few where we're working with 12 people in a more sort of intensive workshop. Uh, and we also do those for vets, so they're an important communication channel. We did a survey of farmers and said, who do you whose opinion and where do you get your information and whose opinion do you value? Uh, at that time, the levy board was actually quite a long way down. That was when I started, but vets were very high up. So it's important to, for us to get our messages through them. So all of our material goes to every vet practice in the country. And we run events for vets to engage with them and get them to understand the things that we want farmers to know. And there's generally they're a very receptive audience because they're very good at the veterinary stuff. They're not so confident at nutrition. And nutrition can be the start of quite a lot of veterinary problems. They're not so good at the breeding stuff and understanding EBVs. But actually, if you get the right EBVs, you may not have so many lambing problems and et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is something you should all go and try. So this is m me doing my t Tony Tomato bit. You should all go and flock at calendar.com. Uh, this is a calendar thing where you put your, your tapping date in or your lambing date, whichever you want to. And I think it'll work for you guys because it's just based on, you know, 147 days from tapping to lambing. And if that's all the information you put in, you will get a series of alerts. So if you put the date in, say you're tapping, it will tell you two weeks before that your tapping's coming up and four weeks before that you should be putting your teasers in. And it'll tell you when your clostridial vaccines are due, six weeks before they're due, your lambing right the way through the year. And you can, you can customise it. So if there's anything that you're doing in Canada that we're not doing, you can put the date in and it will send you an email reminder the Sunday before you're supposed to do that job. So it's a great way of reminding producers of the best practice. And it's a, if we've, we've got about 500 people on it at the moment. We launched it in September. It's a really good way of us reminding them. So um, we, do, we do pregnancy scanning in, in January. So, right, you should, you should be doing your pregnancy scanning next week. Then the week after, so you've got your pregnancy scanning results, let's put those in the book so that we know what we should be expecting at lambing time. And if there's a difference, we might have a problem. This is our virtual plant tool. You can see all of these on our eBEX website. Basically, you can change the pH of the nitrogen or the P and the K, the phosphorus and potassium, and this plant changes and grows depending on how well you do it. So if you give it a poor environment, it looks really runty. If you give it a good environment, it looks great. And over here, it'll tell you the kilograms of dry matter per hectare. That particular combination of pH and, every, and nutrients will give you. So you can, see, um, you can see the direction of travel you should be going in in terms of getting the right pH and potassium and so on. These are Costin's tools, going back to that point. So we've provided these online spreadsheets. You put your basic data in and it does all your key performance indicators. So instead of, this is English language, but instead of going down the pub, and talking with your mates about lambing percentage. And half the time, you're, all, you're defining lambing percentage as something completely different, because I do it use put to the ram. A matey boy over there does it from sheep in the shed and how many lambs he gets from the sheep that are in the shed. But five might have died before they got there. So their losses, as far as I'm concerned, um, or they might have aborted before they even got in the shed. So their losses. So it's about, it, but the point is, we're not talking on the same, we're not benchmarking on the same thing. So there's a, there's a language culture we have to overcome, but we also need to get people to keep those records and providing them with a simple tool to do that. It's the first step. Uh, this is an online ration um, tool. So if you're producing a ration, you want an 18% protein ration and you've got some things in your barn, you can put the, the beans and the barley and the oats and sugar beet, whatever it is you've got. 
It, there's, a, there's a directory of products, you can select those and you can play around with the mix of those to get your 18% ration. I talk, a lot of has been aimed at the average level of the industry. This is more for the innovators and the, uh, the uh, early adopters. This is our BRP+. Plus. So this is, instead of just the 15 minute introduction to the topic, this is the encyclopedia and all the scientific research. So for those that want it, it's only online, we don't print them but it's the, uh, it's the higher level of message delivery. So we've got a, we, we haven't got so many of these, but we've got breeding from new lambs, we've got lucerne, lucerne and chicory and plantain for lambs. Uh, rush management was one that came up after we had a couple of really wet years and rushes began to grow everywhere where they hadn't grown before. Uh, we also do a thing called the grazing club. So this is an online and a sort of a digital media thing. Uh, where we, every month we send an email out with just our grazing messages and the things that people should do that month. And it goes out to our email address list, which is about 7,000 producers. Uh, and then we tweet messages from it. And it's basically things that we've done, so we haven't had to create all new messages, but we didn't have enough communication channels just for that message. Uh, here's an online webinar, so you can go online, click the button, and you can work through. This is about buying rams and being confident in terms of using performance figures to select the ram that suits your system. And this is an online webinar that just takes you through that process and helps you select, helps you to understand how to use performance recorded figures. Uh, we've now got something called eBlex TV, which I think is really cool, using one of your words. We've got an, our own YouTube channel for our clips. And I, it's something we wanted to do two years ago, and we're gradually getting there. We want to have a series of two-minute clips, so you can just click on two minutes, Injection practice, you see some of the young kids doing the stock judging and they don't properly know where to inject an animal and if it's an intramuscular injection or a subcutaneous injection and what products would suit which injection and where they should do it. So two minutes on where to inject and how and why to do it or two minutes on selecting lambs properly or two minutes on doing your RAM MOT. We, we must all have two minutes to just quickly get an update on that topic. So two minute clips is our thing. Uh, we do a costing service of about 400 enterprises for us to get a pitch, a snapshot of what's going on in the, in, in the industry regarding finances. Um, and that, from that we produce a publication which is normally pretty depressing in terms of who's making any profit within the industry. Um, but what it does do is it just highlights the differences between the top guys and the average guys. So if, if they are in that middle ground, we want to get them producing to that top third performance. And it, interestingly, this is for you, Tony. Look, it's in quid. He's look, checking on his phone. Look, I hope you're looking at my website. Are you? Good. I'll let you off then. So, um, so what it shows is that actually the top third producers produced five, five pounds. So what's that? Um, half of seventeen, eight, eight dollars. So they, that actual output was eight dollars less than the average producers. But the reason they're in the top third for production is that their variable costs were considerably less. So 14 pounds on a, on a sort of a 30, 40 pound sort of bill is actually a considerable reduction. So they're, they're feeding less, they're using less veterinary products because their animals are healthier, they're bedding less, whatever it is they're doing, they're spending less money, so they might be making less, but they're spending less, and the ultimate output is that they're producing uh, 17, 18 dollars more per lamb. So the next stage on for that, and this is this new this year, is to sort of have, a, again, a series of online tools where producers can put uh, their own information that would create a gross margin into, a, into there. So you can go online, you've got your own account, you can set that up, you put your information in, or you might be able to want to do it through the year. And then uh, that will be up here. And then we want to work with, uh, I don't know if Mike's in the room, can't see him for the minute. We want to work with the likes of uh, Shearwell who've got software programs to export that data into here. So if you're using an on-farm farm package, export the report, the eBlex report into this, into here. And then you can go into the compare.com over here and you can compare your data with all of our stock take average. You can select whether you want to do it against the average, the top third, or we've made up some target farms that sort of express our ideal picture of what producers should be, do, should be doing. And then if you've done that one year, you can compare this year's data with your data from last year. So it's, it's stuff that people should do for themselves, but it just makes it easy for them. And then uh, you can come down here, and once you put your data in, you can say, so what if the feed prices drop this year? What difference will that make to my cost of production? Or what if I do what eBlex says and I reduce my lambing percentage? I work on my, 
I work in the lambing shed and I, I, I use the right sort of drugs and look after lambs and I reduce my lambing percentage, what difference would that make to my enterprise? Is it worth me doing all that effort? You can just play the what if game down here and it will, it will try and give you a financial sort of uh, uh, image of what that scenario might look for you. Uh, and then here's the herd and the flock calendars up here. So in here, we've tried to sort of categorise a number of farms that we think will be the popular, most popular systems uh, for those target farms. Uh, so evaluating BRP, we're spending levy payers' money and we're always called to task. So we have to try and evaluate and put, a, put an output, a benefit to the industry from this investment we've made on behalf of levy payers. So the hard numbers are those 303 events I told you about, roughly 5,000 people went to them. At every single one of those events, they would fill in a feedback form. We call them happy sheets at the end of the event. So you fill in, you know, was it easy to get to? Were the road signs okay? Were the speakers on, on message? Did they go on too long, or et cetera, et cetera? And have you learned anything? And are you going to go home and use it, which are the key things as far as I'm concerned? And then actually we follow up about three, th we, we follow up a thousand of those attendees six months later and we ask them similar questions about, so we, from our records we see you went to an event, have you put anything into practice since you got home? And, and uh, at the last one, 70% of the people that went to one of our events did adopt something they learned at the event and put it into practice and 98% uh, of those reckoned it had made a financial improvement. So they're sort of hard facts to say to people, we invest a lot in the events, but there's clear uptake of those messages. It's really getting across to producers. And actually, the, the, another nice one I like, that 71% of them then shared one of those ideas with somebody else. So we're kind of spreading out 5,000 people went, but whatever 70% of 5,000 is, shared that with somebody else. Uh, three or four years ago, we also did some telephone survey work that asked a range of questions about the things that we do and I just pulled out a couple of stats here. So we asked them about all of it, some of these things I've talked to you about this afternoon. We asked whether they'd seen them and whether, you know, whether it was a good form of communication for them or not. And farmers in the UK still like to receive something through the post. Cordelia mentioned it, you know, the hard copy. They still like to receive a hard copy. Um, email was, at that time wasn't particularly brilliant and neither was the website. Um, the, at, at that particular time, the average implementation, so we asked them if they'd implemented anything that we, they'd seen or got from us, and that was down here, so that sort of shows a relatively positive uptake. And we asked them to score the things that they did. So everyone sort of scored what we, so even if they didn't use the website, if they had used it, those people that had liked it. So what it shows is, back to that chart I showed you, that people, not everybody uses the website, but you've got to make sure that those do use, who do, those who do use the website value it and see it as good. And then this one was, um, have you seen it and have you used it? So it just shows that the leaflets, the stuff that we posted them was used the most and the DVDs and the websites weren't down here. So that to me is just important that even though we put a lot of stuff on the website, we have to realise that is not for the big chunk of the audience still. It may have changed in the last three or four years and it is shifting in that direction of more sort of internet savvy people and as the younger generation come through, then I think that's obviously the way to go. They all want it on their phones, not just on their computers. 